So I would like to uh, ask uh, the next presenters to come to the stage, and then I will also introduce the chair of the next session, which is Dr. Jashari Bhattacharji. And she's a director and professor and principal of the Vardman uh, Mahavir Medical College and Safdarjung Hospital. She's a national committee member of National Accreditation Board for Laboratories and is president of the Indian Society for Atherocleosaurus Research and Association of Clinical Biochemists of India. Besides many other accreditations, she has been also a member of the National Task Force Committee, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare from the Government of India. She is a past graduate committee member with the Medical Council of India, and she has over 40 years of rich experience in medical academics and has several publications to her name. Welcome. Good afternoon. Namaskar. After this uh, previous session of communicable disease or the infectious disease, we are coming to a very different session of non-communicable disease, but not at all less important, though it will. This is, this, this, uh, our session will be dealing with the very important aspects of malnutrition and psychological problems, but our focus will be mainly through the tools and the data. How could you reach those and get the data collected from the marginal section of far off places, like Darbhanga, Kashmir and all. How could this get this data? The first two present presentation will be taken by Raman Mahajan. Raman here. Raman is a public health professional and trained epi epidemiologist whose intent has worked with MSS in Delhi where he has carried out epidemiological research work, operational research and monitoring and evaluation using both qualitative and quantitative data. He is experienced in designing studies, developing monitoring and evaluation tools, database management, data analysis and documentation. His main focus is infectious disease and childhood malnutrition. So today his first talk will be on measuring acute malnutrition, retrospective mortality and measles vaccination coverage through standardized monitoring and assessment of relief and transition survey in Darbhanga district, a very marginalized area of Bihar itself, and focusing on malnutrition. Raman Mahajan, please. Uh, thanks for kind introduction, ma'am. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, acute malnutrition, mortality, and measles vaccine coverage survey using SMART in the Ramanga district, Bihar. So what exactly is SMART? Uh, so my presentation will be more focused on methodology rather than results and everything. Uh, so SMART. Uh, stands for standardized monitoring and assessment of relief and transition. So as name suggests, is mainly used for emergency setting. Even MSF has used uh, smart methodology surveys, but majority of these surveys were conducted in Africa. Uh, there's very limited evidence of such surveys being conducted in Indian setting. So SMART is a basically a uh, rapid assessment service. Uh, so it's a basically prevalence studies, uh, uh, is highly standardized and simpli simplified. So you can get a situation analysis in terms of malnutrition, mortality, and vaccine coverage. Uh, let's start with context first. Uh, as Dr. In Uni in his morning talk uh, said that uh, there is more than one lakh children died every year in India because of malnutrition alone. In India, malnutrition is a major public health issue. Uh, but there is very limited information about the exact situation of malnutrition in India. Uh, the last survey, the National Family Health Survey, which was conducted in year 2005, uh, the prevalence of malnutrition in India was around 20%. Uh, prevalence of global acute malnutrition in India was around 20%, and prevalence of severe acute malnutrition was 6.4%. In Bihar, where the situation is even worse where the prevalence of global acute malnutrition was around 27% and prevalence of uh, severe acute malnutrition was 8.3%, which is quite high. Uh, following widespread flooding in Bihar in year 2007, MSF did a nutrition and mortality survey there. And we, what we found there is that the prevalence of global acute malnutrition was 19% and prevalence of severe acute malnutrition was 
4.8 percent, and the mortality rate was uh, quite higher also. It was 0 0.5. That's per 10,000 population per day. So, following based on these results, MSF start his uh, CMAM community-based management of acute malnutrition project in a Birol block of Darbanga district, with the aim to treat malnutrition. malnutrition. So, the program was started in early 2009, and since then, over one. 17,000 children has been treated. Uh, the project has a good outcome, uh, but we have quite high defaulter rate. But those who do not default, they, the cure rate is as high as 90%. After six years of intervention, we don't have the exact uh, data on the current situation of malnutrition in Darbanga state. Uh, with this aim, we, uh, with this objective, we, we did this survey to determine the prevalence of uh, undernutrition among children aged between 6 to 59 months. And the secondary objective was to determine the mortality rate, crude mortality rate, as well as, as under 5 mortality rate, uh, and measles vaccine coverage in the Dharvanga district. Uh, so methodology, as I said, that we use SMART methodology. Uh, so SMART uh, has a system to do quality check, data entry, analysis, plausibility check, data reporting. So everything is inbuilt. They provide a software, uh, which is emergency nutritional assessment software. Uh, so you can use this tool. Uh, I have given a snapshot of uh, the planning uh, page of this tool. So, uh, so the area was Darbanga district. The population is very high, 3.9. So that was our sampling frame. Uh, it's majority rural, 92% uh, rural. And there's more than 1,000 villages, 80 urban blocks. Uh, we did the survey in June. And so timing was uh, there is uh, suited with seasonality. So uh, if you conduct the same survey in December, the, you have different result if, than you did it in June. So June is generally have the, is the peak season for malnutrition, what we have seen in our uh, admission trend from our project. So for sample size estimation, we used an estimated prevalence of 15 and the desired precision of 3.5 percent. And it, because it's a cluster sampling, we used a 1.5 as a de design effect. And, and we get the minimum samples 53 children of under five years of age. Uh, to get these children, we need some assumption of the demography. So on the assumption that there will be 4.9 uh, person each household, and there will be 16 percent uh, five years of age, and uh, there will be 5 percent non-respondent rate. So, we, so to get these 653 children, we need to uh, uh, survey at least 974 households. Uh, and similarly for mortality uh, uh, sample size, we estimate 832 household. But since the mortality, since the nutrition uh, sample size for nutritional assessment it was 974, we used the higher sample, higher sample size, that is 974. Uh, the methodology was two so villages and ur urban wards were our first stage of sample and so the 41 wards were selected using probability proportionate to sample size uh, to probability proportionate to size uh, sampling so we use this tool to get these 41 villages we just import the data of population uh, village wise population in this ena software and 41 clusters were aut automatically selected from it uh, and then we used a already ready-made household list to get further second stage. So we used uh, recently done uh, socioeconomic and caste cent uh, census uh, survey to get the household list. And since villages are very widespread and very po populated in Bihar, so it's not feasible uh, for our survey team to get and cover all all the village. So we did a further segmented segmentation based on enumeration block. So each uh, villages was further segmented into enumeration block, which is which covers around 250 to 300 household. And then we selected each enumeration block from this 41 selected village based on uh, same PPS sampling. And then from each uh, enumeration block, we select 24 households uh, using simple random sampling. So we used uh, two questionnaires, uh, open, uh, close-ended, standard uh, uh, questionnaires. One for and one is for 
child nutrition questionnaire for children aged between 6 to 59 month and the variable which we uh, anthropometric var variable which we uh, collected was weight height age and muac uh, age i will tell you that age in that context is very difficult to obtain because in darbanga mother rarely know their children's age uh, so what what we use a locally made event calendar so that and the event calendar is basically we report all these uh, important event in darbanga district like festivals or seasons or uh, harvesting season and so that we can came as near as as close as much to the child exact age uh, so what exactly malnutrition so when child has uh, inadequate calories in their diet they usually have uh, low protein energy Uh, and they suffer from protein energy malnutrition who according to who reference the there's three main indicators for uh, malnutrition what is one is wasting then stunting then then underweight uh, wasting is the most important which is a indicator of acute malnutrition which is when when the child have low weight for their height so when it is uh, less than three standard deviation from the reference who standard reference it is called severe acute malnutrition and when it is less than two standard deviation from the who reference it is uh, global acute malnutrition uh, other apart from who z score the other commonly used criteria for wasting is muac which even in our project we are using muac is mid upper arm circumference if it is less than 115 mm it is severe and if it is let less, less than 125 mm it is global stunting which is uh, chronic malnutrition which is also prevalent very prevalent in this part over is also when it is less than 3 standard deviation from who standards uh, severe and when it is less than 2 standard deviation from uh, who standards global acute malnutrition uh, underweight which is uh, a sort of composite index which covers both chronic as well as Uh, acute malnutrition uh, similarly it's less than 3 standard deviation for severe and less than 2 standard deviation for uh, uh, global uh, for smart methodology also recommend some cleaning criteria so when uh, data is like plus m plus minus 3 standard deviation from the uh, observed mean uh, they there is more chances that data is uh, uh, either uh, miscalculated or there is wrong entry so we exclude this uh, this flag data from our analysis so for uh, for survey uh, we use five teams uh, of three member each two measures and one supervisor uh, there were several pre survey activities like we did a three days training to surveyors then we did a pre testing of the questionnaire tools then we did a standard standardization test to evaluate the performance of survey team the <coughs> and the data quality check was done by plausibility check report uh, so uh, plausibility check report gives a estimation that whether your data is uh, of good quality or not so for in our case we get a to, uh, it gives a number so we get like 22% which is which is acceptable range so we are okay with the our database quality so and we use uh, ens software for data analysis so these are the some pictures of the actual survey this is the first picture is of standardization test then second is the pre pre testing of the questionnaire then uh, we we use a locally made uh, height board and salter scale to measure height and uh, height and weight of child and these all these in instruments were calibrated every morning before the survey so let's come to the results uh so uh in fact we didn't reach the minimum sample size there were several reason behind it first like uh there were few houses which were missing uh, uh because it was vacations in darbanga children was uh, children were out of their house and we also overestimate proportion of under 5 children we we said uh, 16% but in reality it was 12% so that's why we didn't reach a minimum sample size so we reached 906 household covering 5537 individual and 510 children aged under less aged between 6 to 59 months 
so uh, there so 50 the among children among 510 children which we surveyed surveyed 55% were male 35% were less than 2 year of uh, 2 year of age 12% belong to scheduled caste so we also asked question about public distribution system and so 43% children have uh, shows that they have they are below poverty line seven p children uh, reported they have uh, some sort of morbidity morbidity in last two weeks um, the major morbidities were fever cold and cough diarrhea and vomiting and these graphs show that uh, uh, our data is quite representative of the our sample was quite representative of the demography uh, acute malnutrition we found that 3% uh, of our children were severe acute malnourish and 14% global acute malnourish uh, if the graph is quite skewed toward the left hand side from the who standard uh, uh, graph and the risk, main risk factor for global acute malnutrition was age less than 2 year uh, children belong to scheduled caste community morbidity in last 2 weeks and, and the only cause uh, significant risk factor for severe acute malnutrition was the in last 2 weeks uh, and based on MOEC cutoff we found that 3.7% uh, children were same and 9.8% were CAM uh, and the only risk factor for uh, finding uh, children SAM is uh, age less than 2 years uh, and the prevalence of underweight was also very high the 44.3% uh, children were underweight in our survey and the prevalence of stunting was also quite high 45.6% uh, were underweight uh, and 18.2% were severely stunted um, could, uh, mortality rate was low the crude mortality was 0 0.2 deaths per 10,000 per uh, there was no significant difference between male and females most of the that two-third of the deaths were people who were more than 65 years of age uh, under 5 mortality rate was also low 0 0.34 deaths per 10,000 per day uh, measles vaccine coverage was minimal uh, we found that the coverage was 8.3 percent but only 35 percent uh, was verified through immunization card. The remaining 45% don't recall. So it could be, or right, we don't know. So this is the result. Uh, this table is comparing results with NFHS3 conducted in 2005-06 uh, with and MSF survey conducted in 2008 and 2014. So uh, there is some declining trend. There is a slight reduction, just three, slight reduction in uh, acute malnutrition if you see from NFHS 3 in 2006 and from with the current survey uh, I would like to conclude with the remark that the uh, prevalence of GAM and SAM is uh, reducing but it's not to that extent because if we compare with 2008 survey MSF survey and this survey the confidence interval is overlapping it's not much difference from the 2007 and we don't have any evidence of uh, on improvement of uh, general food security in the community uh, but go good thing is that uh, both the severely acute malnutrition and globally below uh, the threshold of uh, emergency as given by sphere standards uh, the under 5 mortality rate is quite low and the measles vaccine coverage is uh, okay so what I would recommend with this study is that uh, they still the level of malnutrition is still very high in Darbanka district they need to be uh, some good intervention needed to be done in that community to make this uh, treatment for malnutrition more accessible to the children. So community-based management of acute malnutrition could play a good role in it. Uh, malnutrition is caused by several factors. There's not only single factor which is responsible for malnutrition. Uh, and high morbidity in the community, that is 57% in month of June. That shows that they, they are, children are suffering from um, many seasonal illness so there's need to improve the access to public health care system and uh, in the gap of uh, evidence we I would like to uh, recommend smart methodology to use for uh, conducting uh, malnutrition survey That's all. thank you Raman I understand his passion and his involved emotional involvement with these malnourished children but our time is short and you are also having another topic to talk about on the same thing, management of acute malnutrition program in Darbanga. Using another 
mobile data collection i think yeah. another tool so before we go for questions i think uh, we can start with the next one okay. and we can have the question but if you want to have little question from them you have to hurry up now you are i can give you only 5 minutes so that we can interact more i have a question it's Sorry. called uh, it says can you share the cost of using smart uh is very minimum is uh we didn't hire any any consultancy to do the survey so i think it was around 3 lakh 300000 something around this uh, is is one month 15 days mobile data collection for routine monitoring of the community based management of acute malnutrition program in darbhanga raman please uh, good afternoon again so uh, the second presentation is about the use of mobile phone for data collection in this management of acute malnutrition program in darbhanga district bihar uh, so what exactly is uh, com- cmm community based management of acute malnutrition total of care for treatment of malnutrition so uh, once children malnutrition uh, children came to you you screen children uh, using some appropriate criteria it could be weight for height score or meet up arm circumference uh, and then the severe acute malnutrition is ch- uh, with no complication children are treated majority of children 85 more than 85% treated in outpatient basis in the community and those who need those who need immediate medical attention and they were or have some complications they were the inpatient therapeutic care are providing to them so now i'm going to talk about uh, msf cmm program in darbhanga district uh, we started this cmm program in 2009 so more than 70000 children treated since then the admit is, is between 6 to 59 months uh, the admission criteria we use in our project is mid upper arm circumference we use uh, uh, moac lesson 115 for admission and 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 or bilateral edema or uh, and discharge when child has moac more than 120 uh, so it's a three three level three level model so Uh, at the baseline is is a accredited uh, accredited society which is a government uh, uh, health which usually refer to children to us yeah, they screen children using moac tape and refer uh, the same children to primary health center where our anms children if they found uh, children as same then they start uh, uh, inter- uh, treatment and those children who ha- who are complicated and need medical attention and inpatient stay they were referred to second level of uh, a model which is nutrition rehabilitation unit where children where there is go- uh, gnm uh, general nurse midwife uh, look after these children and those even more severe uh, children from them uh, from these those who need a doctor they were referred to tertiary care hospital um, medical um, malnutrition intensive care unit situated in uh, darbhanga district so why we use, why we collect data as an all program msf is doing this uh, mainly for monitoring and evaluation purpose purpose and also to keep track track of uh, patient uh, response to treatment uh, also we use this data for operational research purpose which we can later use for advocacy purpose uh, the conventional data entry method was that we uh, mm, uh, doctors enter patient information in treatment card and the operator took the treatment card entered data into excel database and then um, then we analyzed uh, but the component, it need t- time to enter data and it need resources paper uh, data entry operators um, this this common and this reporting delay uh, so what our innovative legislation think of in 2013 that maybe we can use mobile phone for uh, data collection and sharing uh, common paper based uh, data entry so uh, we consult a social enterprises company uh, which provide a open source applic- platform uh, which is comcare which is subdivided into two two platform what one is comcare mobile and one is comcare hq the aim is to provide field work, worker better track and support registration and follow up so how does it work so you can create a form in the uh, comcare hq which is a server based device then you can install this application in your phones uh, and then from the phones 
you can enter data and then and then uh, and data can be from the server that data can be accessed by anybody who, who is registered so uh, here five nutrition in our project is sending this data uh, through their nokia mobile phones and then this data uh, was received in the server in delhi then we can uh, monitor the data routinely at from our site uh, so so for example a mother came to our PSC in Darbanga, then AM entered the data, AM make a summary sheet. Then our nutrition link worker visited the site and take the summary sheet from the AM and uh, enter data into the mobile and then sent submit the button and then this from the mobile the data was received into the server and the registered uh, program managers can access this data from the server at any time. So it saves our time, it saves paper. Uh, the data is actually real-time database. Uh, there's no need of data entry operators or papers. So this is this is some data we received from from the mobile device since September 13 to September 14. And there's some missing, when we compare with the conventional way of entering data, there is some data lost. So only 70% of total ad admissions were recorded. So main challenging is uh, delay in data sending, our nutrition link worker is not sending data. Uh, there's no uh, check rules applied in the mobile. Uh, weight of five, five year old child as 50 kg, we cannot differentiate it whether it is right or wrong. Uh, sometimes there is no, no or poor internet. Uh, also, the nutrition link worker reported that screen is too low and uh, screen is too small and keypad is very small. And so what we learn from our uh, pilot intervention is that this need to be, need some improvement. Uh, uh, we need a system to develop daily quality control and, and upload data. Uh, we need to have a on-call tech support. Uh, uh, instead of uh, 3G system, data sent through SMS will be more useful. Uh, uh, we need a training of AM nutrition link worker and and instead of having a summary data set we we can use uh, to have uh, this phone mobile to get information directly from patient thank you few quick questions Yes, please. Please speak into the mic so that even the they can hear you, what you are asking. Uh, thank you, Raman, for your nice presentations. Uh, I would like to understand, you mentioned about the NRC model of the MSF in Darpanga. How is it different from the Government of India Nutrition Rehabilitation Centers uh, model, which is operational? For example, Nutrition Limi uh, Rehabilitation Center and a very limited ca capacity, it's only inpatient. So, for example, for whole district is 30 bed NRC. You know, see the burden of malnutrition is very high in that district. It's not sufficient and it's not uh, outpatient basis. And in our CMA model, it's majority 85% uh, children is treated in com community or on outpatient basis. Can I have one more question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is regarding your first presentation, the smart tool that you were talking about. What is the possibility of adding your own customization questions in that instrument? I mean, like, it seems to be very suited for nutritional uh, surveys. But uh, you can add, uh, but in analysis, in report, it will analyze only that inbuilt in SMART. Yeah, like, we added the questions on uh, measles vaccine coverage, but then we, you need to analyze separately using different software or like other softwares. Thank you. Thank you, Raman. I think excellent uh, work which you guys are doing in uh, Darbanga. I work for government of Karnataka and uh, we used to run the mother-child tracking scheme and we found uh, this tremendous inertia amongst the ANMs, especially if especially in the 40 plus uh, age group category in terms of using mobiles for entering data, behavioral issue of uh, getting them to mindset that mobile is also used for so what was your experience in terms of uh, the more uh, senior health workers in implementing this uh, mobile-based uh, app? Actually, we didn't use uh, government. Uh, we used our MSF staff who were using uh, mobile phone. They were quite okay with it. So 
they were sending every day uh, <coughs> but we give a training so still there is some problem they are not sending they are not sending every uh, the data every day uh, and if there is some problem they are not e even we don't have any in house capacity uh, if there is any technical problem right we are still depending on the company who is providing us so uh, as i saw that we need a uh, on call tech support and a training to health workers to make it more uh, more useful uh, thanks Rob. thanks raman for the presentations just one question quickly uh, have you uh, thought of looking for tb uh, considering that we are in india look you looked at measles uh, TB is associated with malnutrition. Uh, TB is heavily underdiagnosed or grossly underdiagnosed among these young uh, children, but we know that it happens. But just would have you ever thought of in incorporating, uh, including um, TB screening strategy among this uh, population? Uh, not yet. It's a, it's a open source software, but if you need more uh, more qualities like uh, sending GS, GIS coordinates or sending images, then you need to pay for it. But the basic one is free. So I personally thank uh, Raman for this wonderful okay. work because it is not easy to data collection. Even in Delhi, it is very tough, so I can understand Darbhanga. So congratulations for carrying out this uh, research and giving us the opportunity to hear to your findings. So next week, from malnutrition, now we'll go to mental health. Our next speaker is Shabnam Ara. She is a clinical psychologist and work in ML project in Kashmir, India. She received graduate and postgraduate degree in psychology from the University of Kashmir and had ML psychology, the Department of Government Medical College. She qualified for the NET conduct test by UGC and prepared papers in JK Science Congress and Regional Science Congress 013 conducted at the University of Kashmir. Shabnam Ara will be speaking on adapting mental health screening tools to the Kashmir Valley, a contextual description. Shabnam, thank, please. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon and I welcome all of you. My presentation is about cultural adaptation and translation of depression anxiety screening tools in Kashmir Valley, India. Uh, this is the outline of my presentation, what I'll be presenting here, uh, text of mental health in Kashmir, why we did adaptation and translation of these two tools. Uh, why we chose Hopkins symptom checklist and Howard trauma questionnaire and finally how the main steps involved in this cultural adaptation and translation how we did this translation and adaptation so as many of us here know that there is more than two decade long uh, armed conflict going on in Kashmir which has a serious impact on the mental health of the people who live there in Kashmir uh, and the psychological injuries resulting from this conflict can have more damaging and long-term consequences, uh, but they remain uh, distanced and undetected. Therefore, the need of the R is to highlight the damaging consequences of this, mental, uh, of this conflict on the mental health of there in Kashmir. Uh, it's pertinent to mention here that MSF has been providing mental health services in Kashmir since 2001. We are planning to conduct a mental health survey to estimate prevalence of depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress-related disorders in Kashmir Valley. Uh, once we uh, decided to just estimate this prevalence, uh, there was a question, how? There has to have some tool to estimate this prevalence. Therefore, uh, uh, we approached uh, two mental health institutions. Uh, for, we were searching for the tool and we approached two uh, institutions uh, in the Kashmir who uh, primarily deal with mental health. One is the Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, uh, which was formerly also known as, uh, known as Department of Psychiatry and uh, the Postgraduate Department of Psychology. But to our surprise, we found that there, is, there was not even a single tool that has been uh, validated, adapted or uh, developed for the Kashmiri population. That here comes the question of why. That is why we just chose to adapt this and uh, translate this tool, so that we will have some we have some uh, tool uh, that will be adapted and translated for this population. And also, uh, by first uh, adapting and uh, uh, translating a tool, we uh, we can just uh, focus and uh, get the uh, robust results for the survey. Uh, then. Uh, once we decided to adapt and uh, translate a tool, there was another question. Uh, 
which tools we will uh, take for this uh, adaptation and translations. Uh, there are several tools available, but why we choose this uh, specifically uh, Hopkins symptom checklist and Howard trauma questionnaire, I will mention here why. Uh, but before that, I'll give a brief description of these questionnaires. Uh, Hopkins symptom checklist is a 25 <coughs> item uh, questionnaire. Uh, first 10 items are used to assess the anxiety symptoms and the remaining 15 items are used to assess uh, the depressive symptoms. And the uh, Howard trauma questionnaire, uh, HTQ, it's used for assessing um, uh, the post-traumatic stress disorders. It consists of 16 uh, items. Uh, the now, I, I was uh, just mentioning why we chose these specifically these two tools because we found that they have been extensively used in post conflict settings, and also uh, there is a, another thing that uh, came out that it has been used in uh, it has been translated into Urdu as it has been used in similar populations in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran. And more importantly, out of our, uh, from our initial roundtable uh, meeting, collaborators, Institute of, uh, Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, and uh, the uh, faculty members, Department of Psychology, and the MSF clinical psychologists, we, we just felt that the items in this tool are appropriate to the Kashmiri population, but they need to be culturally adapted and translated. Uh, so now I will be discussing this thing, how we culturally adapted and translated this tool. Multilingual Kashmiri team, uh, in which there were, we had psychiatrists and faculty members from the Department of Psychiatry, uh, the faculty members from the Department of Psychi uh, Psychology, and the MSF clinical psychologists. This team, this is a multilingual team, uh, team, who reviewed every single item in these tools and then identified the Kashmiri constructs for these items. I mentioned here, they identified Kashmiri constructs. It was not a direct translation. It was that uh, they identified these constructs. Then in the say, uh, and kind of a pre, uh, kind of a draft was formulated in Kashmiri, and then uh, in the second step we had a pre-listing interview. We trained uh, a few students from the Department of Psychology who conducted 40 interviews uh, with the uh, 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 40 individuals, uh, uh, socio-economic groups, and different domiciles, male and 20 were female among them, and then. Uh, they, these, interviews con were, these interviews were conducted to elicit, to find the lay terms, the cultural terms that Kashmiris use to express these symptoms, uh, these disorders. And the in, uh, results from these interviews were compared with these uh, 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 constructs that were already identified. They were compared with those constructs and a kind of a pre-final uh, tool was, Kashmiri a tool was formulated and framed out that was sent to the translators to independent translators uh, uh, to experts who uh, were from the Department of English University of Kashmir they, I, I have mentioned here they are it is blind back translation blind blind by blind we, I mean that they were not the part of the uh, group who uh, participate in identifying the uh, constructs so uh, we sent simply the Kashmiri version to those uh, uh, translators and when we got these back these translations uh, they were reviewed again uh, uh, they were reviewed again by the team consisting of those psychiatrists faculty members of the psychiatry and psychologists and the clinical psychologist we just uh, uh, reviewed and kind of a pre final draft was formulated uh, kind of a final, I can say, final uh, tool was uh, formulated, Kashmiri adapted tool was formulated and translated. Uh, we had that tool that was then uh, pre tested by four uh, uh, MSF clinical psychologists across six different locations in Kashmir. Is that on slight variation in the use of the terms from North to South Kashmir that we include within parenthesis in our tool. Then another finding in that uh, uh, pretest uh, came out that item number nine, that was uh, of the Harvard trauma questionnaire, that was feeling on guard, was found very difficult to adapt, and therefore we changed uh, that to constantly feeling and acting ready for any kind of threat. This question was then rechecked and uh, rechecked for understanding and felt to be appropriate. Uh, the st uh, internal reliability was by you by using Cronbach Alpha, and it was found for Hopkins sy symptom checklist to be 0.92, and for Cronbach and for uh, uh, HTQ Howard trauma questionnaire, the Cronbach Alpha came out to be 0.95, indicating a very strong uh, strong internal reliability of these uh, tools. Uh, the limitation of this study was that it was. Uh, confined to the pretest, uh, uh, which had a 
a very small sample size. Uh, the conclusion of the study is that the tra direct translation of these tools into Kashmiri would have led to confusion, misunderstanding and inaccurate results. Therefore, the transcultural adaptation and translation ensure tools identify local constructs for expressing symptoms of mental illness. And more importantly, the, uh, uh, I, I would like to conclude with the, this thing that very basic and uh, root level exercise for, uh, for getting a tool so that we can conduct such a huge survey that we, uh, MSF is planning to, to uh, do there in Kashmir in coming few months. Uh, we are, in that, we will be uh, serving 3,700 households across the, uh, 10 different districts and having a very uh, uh, reliable, some tool that is culturally adapted and which will provide uh, some valid and reliable results is very important. That's all from me. I just want to thank all the collaborators uh, who collaborated and uh, participated uh, and my special thank the principal uh, investigator and the epidemiologist of uh, this uh, uh, pro project, uh, Tamri Housen, who uh, provided me this opportunity to present this here. And I thank you all of you for listening to me. Dantas is currently working as a logistic coordinator with MSF Holland in India. He values the role logistic plays in enhancing MSF's work and stresses the importance of continuous He believes that field workers should push for change and excellence in humanitarian work. Dantas, please. Thank you. Thank and you. his talk is use of mobile technologies. Again, we are coming back to mobile technologies in data collection for a mental health survey in Kashmir, India, a pilot study. Not us, please. Thank you. So apparently, as you all understand, there's a lot of talk about uh, mobile, right? Uh, Raman already mentioned something. Uh, Dr. Sharing mentioned that the Public Health Foundation of India is on top of it. For those that yesterday watched the uh, uh, London Scientific Day, there was like three, four different solutions presented. So the question is, for me as well, when I was de developing the solution, well, what is the new element that I'm bringing? I'll answer this question uh, after giving you a little bit of uh, uh, background. The plan that we have is to conduct a mental health survey in Kashmir uh, that will involve uh, a 10 district, 3,700 household uh, in that. Uh, and MSF historically has been collecting the data via, via uh, paper questionnaires. For those that in the past have done surveys like this, three, the number 3,700 questions, 15 pages, and data entry afterwards, I'm sure it gives you the chills, right? Yes. I mean, the, the picture is realistic. The image on the presentation is realistic. That, that, that's what people have to deal with that do uh, long surveys. So for us, we decided to uh, try something new and instead of the paper to use tablets. So we piloted, we took the chance of the, of the validation of the mental health tool that Sabnum just presented, also to test and pilot the use of the tablets for that solution before we go to the big survey. So to reduce the risk of, uh, of uh, failure, let's say. Okay. Our target, was to eliminate time-consuming and error-prone data entry, <coughs> paper-filling questionnaires by default, because this human behavior involves a lot of errors, okay? To reduce the time for processing the data, imagine that after collecting the data, someone has to sit with a pile of papers and punch all this data into a computer. A lot of mistakes happen <coughs> over there as well plus the time that someone spends on that. And of course, we can also involve the photocopying costs, if you want. Almost 4,000 uh, questionnaires, 15 pages each, two, three rupees per page, so you can do the calculation roughly and see how much the cost, only for photocopies, let alone the rest. Um, based on research that has been done, uh, I'll just give you a rough number, uh, some rough numbers. We're talking about reducing the cost of big surveys at around 25% with uh, the accuracy data increases. The time uh, of, of the whole survey reduces, some research they even mentioned 94%, so it halves, basically. 
uh, agents are reduced. You don't need someone to punch the data afterwards into a computer from to, to transfer the data from paper to a computer. And of course, the data quality, and that is the biggest advantage, I think, for the epidemiologists, the data quality increases tremendously. Research mentions that uh, several research sources mention from 14 to 57 percent more data accuracy and uh, an error rate of 3 percent of errors versus 35 percent if we compare mobile to uh, paper. So the project for us, we also use the open data uh, kit. Uh, it's a very common uh, open source kit that uh, we developed in-house. The questionnaire was uploaded on uh, tablets that four of our counselors, psychologists, used to uh, provide uh, to a sample of uh, five outpatient uh, departments. Um, there was a different uh, uh, language script provided, so the counselors had the choice to choose be between English uh, script and Kashmiri script. In order to avoid uh, wrong data, we uh, provided uh, pre-coded skip pattern, patterns. So if a question was not relevant, was not appearing uh, afterwards. Okay. And also we provided limitations on the range of data. So the head of the family, just to give you an example, the head of a, of a family cannot be below 20 years old, right? It's a bit of a common sense. Okay. So these were ob uh, uh, possible to integrate. We had the, uh, uh, the questions were stored into the tablet. Okay. And we had uh, automated. So the moment that the tablet would enter, we return in our office automatically the data will be uploaded on our server without any human interaction. That will happen automatically. There was also the option, there were the options to do it over 2G or 3G. The data uh, size is very small. We're talking about a few. So there was this new one to, uh, to do it. Uh, it can also be done via, uh, if you connect the tablet with your smartphone, if you are outside in any place that has mobile coverage, you can create your mobile phone as a hotspot and connect the tablet and upload the data. Okay, so everything is possible also offline via cable. So uh, the outcomes, I think it's better for uh, Sabnum to, uh, with first-hand experience to, uh, to uh, present to you, and I'll come back later. Thanks, Nuntas. I'll not take more than two minutes. Uh, Nuntas uh, just asked me to present the outcome. It's because, as you can see, I, I was among one of the psychologist data collectors who used this uh, ta tablet for data collection. Uh, I think I did more than 70 interviews by using this uh, these, uh, tab this tablet. And the overall impression that I had by using this tablet is that it's very innovative, very efficient and accurate method of data collection. As you can see from the study, we did some of the interviews uh, uh, using the paper that uh, we, that we found later not properly entered and uh, all the cases, some of the cases were, uh, some of the data was missing. As you can see, ni only 96% of 96% uh, of uh, the uh, cases were complete, and rest were we had some problem with them. Either the data was lost, and even in those complete cases, there were 20% uh, cases where uh, clarification on the handwriting was sought. And it's it's here important to mention here we did only few interviews. It's only nine interviews that we did by using this paper, and we had uh, trouble doing this, and there was missing data and things like that. Uh, while uh, the uh, uh, interviews that we uh, did by using there was no such issue and it was very efficient and accurate method. Another thing that is, it was about us, the data collectors, then th there was an, another thing that uh, what will be the perception of those with whom we use these tablets, the respondents. And we found that they, there was overall very positive, they responded very positively uh, when we uh, collected da data by using these tablets. Uh, uh, found that the respondents were in fact impressed and intrigued by this technique. Uh, and uh, this is first time that we uh, uh, we used uh, uh, technique, technology, uh, data collection. It, traditionally we use in Kashmir or in many uh, paper uh, for collection of data. And one important thing as data collector uh, was that uh, this technique uh, served as icebreaker. Here by this I mean that it helped us to build more rapport. 
w once we are s noting down something with paper, it uh, requires more resources. We have to focus on and enter every data that we are asking. So we, we do not get really proper time and uh, uh, to just interact with the person to whom, uh, from whom we, uh, we are getting the information. Therefore, it, uh, in, uh, it helped us in that uh, while we are uh, talking to the person, we can enter simultaneously also. It does not need us to actually s uh, sit down and first just note down the things uh, in the series that it uh, in that way it have to build a rapport and uh, do the interview properly and get the proper information and uh, th there is again one uh, important uh, one i can say a uh, good feature of this uh, table auto calculation of the scores once we did this interview automatically uh, we get the uh, summated score of the person so that uh, if sometimes uh, person asks respond ask where do i stand on these dimensions we can just provide the feedback instantly and there is again one implication of this auto calculation of scores uh, uh, once we are interviewing the person maybe he or she comes out to be uh, in a depression in anxiety or some uh, something like that, within trauma, traumatic uh, kind of a situation. Uh, so these scores, although we can clinically find out uh, in the interview that he or she is depressed or uh, something like that, but this uh, helps us to actually uh, instantly uh, corroborate our clinical uh, uh, observations, and we can simply refer the patient to the psychiatrist or the uh, concerned clinical psychologist for the immediate uh, help one more uh, uh, implication of this using these tablets and there are a few other features that may be uh, known to us can more uh, elaborately uh, speak on that uh, known to us, please thanks so uh, to add to that uh, all there's several possibilities uh, you can uh, record the geolocation so afterwards when the data downloaded our epidemiologist can uh, do uh, an analysis uh, p uh, based on uh, on the location, based on the area, uh, ba uh, using the GPS coordinates that are uh, recorded automatically. Um, of course, the real time, as already mentioned, the real time review of the data provides the opportunity very fast to give feedback to the team to ask clarification. So it also improves the uh, quality of the data. And for us, we didn't also encounter any issues with uh, data losses or uh, technical uh, issues. So the conclusion, uh, the conclusions that we have is that uh, uh, our experience advocates for open source mobile technologies to be used wherever MSF. Secondly, our pilot uh, proved the upscalability of the solution. The big mental health uh, survey that we are planning in Kashmir for the uh, 10 di district uh, survey. Okay, it proves that we can do it. It's easy. It doesn't cause any big problems. For me, additionally to that and to one question, the difference that we bring is that this solution is a frugal solution. This was built in-house, based in resources. I'm not an IT person, despite someone might suspect. Probably most of you here are better in IT than I am. Okay. But this is a very frugal solution. It was built in-house, without the need expertise, and to be honest, I even avoided uh, asking for uh, HQ expertise uh, for, uh, uh, to avoid the bureaucracy of HQ. So we did it, <laughs> so, uh, so we did it ourselves. Okay. It's possible. It's an easy solution. It also breaks the silos. Logistics with uh, medical departments, with the project collaborator all together, and we brought this in, things, we, in, in, in place. We didn't ask for experts, we didn't fly people in. It's also a solution that is easy and doable in insecure settings where people, experts, and externals cannot fly in. Okay, here in India is fine, but imagine flying experts and companies in places like Afghanistan or Iraq or Syria at the moment. It's a high security risk. Um, regarding the sustainability of the solution after, let's say, myself uh, leaving, uh, for the moment we have trained our national staff, we have trained our IT officer, we have trained our uh, national staff in the medical department, and they are already able to uh, pick it up and continue and actually expand it even better than uh, we would do it. In terms of confidentiality concerns, someone asked the, the, the question about confidentiality. There is a secure uh, transfer the data online, but the good thing is that you also can do it simply via a cable. Okay, assuming that those guys steal data from us 
are always more sophisticated, we can do it the traditional way via a cable. So that option is also there. So, again, I'm not an IT person. The only thing that I touched was an Excel file and the rest happened uh, via the ODK software. And there is a very strong volunteer community active, the ODK community, which have a lot of information. So, uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Shabnam and Nantes, for carrying out this work in Kashmir Valley. Thank you very much, uh, the presenters and the chair, for your time and for your uh, presentation.